This week, Drew and I discussed the Diamond Crown number four, Maduro. I have a question for you, Story Geeks listeners. Do you want a Slack channel? If you don't know what it is, we're going to ask you. We have Sticks of the Week. And towards the end of the episode, stuff you might need to know. Episode 332 of Stogie Geek starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, aka Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 332. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. Privilege and an honor to be here. I'm excited. Drew and I have lots of stuff that we want to talk about and maybe some stuff that you might to know. I have a question for you, Stogie Geeks. Do you want a Slack channel? Uh, we can have uh, you sign up for one, and it's a great uh, tool. We're going to get into that uh, as to what it does. I'm going to need a little bit of feedback from you, and if you want one, I'll show you, I'll tell you how we're using it in our <coughs> other shows here at Security Weekly. Uh, and if you want it, then we'll have it and if you don't then we're moving on but we're not at that point yet we're going to talk about stick of the week it's diamond crown number four maduro i'm excited always excited to talk about this stick it's one of my favorite diamond crowns for sure but before that i want to introduce you to a gentleman the little dark haired kid from texas mr drew gavin what up hey what's up joe what are you doing over here uh, here in Texas is chilling, uh, enjoying this nice, uh, you know, three-digit degree temperature. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're in the hundreds. Uh, we're trying to stay right at that and just below that, but whatever. So yeah, no, just enjoying the week. Uh, you know, just you know, things seem to be settling down a little bit. You know, with all the uh, uh, COVID nineteen stuff, but mm. we're still seeing some big numbers over here in Texas mm. and. Uh, you know, with all the uh, people out and about without masks and things of that nature, mm. they are definitely seeing an uptick in numbers again. So mm. other than that, uh, enjoying the week, smoking some stogies out in the cigar garden, drinking some drinks, doing the work, you know, doing the Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to uh, 4.30 p.m., you know, drive, you know. So, yeah. yeah. That what about you? I, uh. I had my first I forgot about COVID moment this week and got yelled at. <laughs> that happened. Nice. Uh, I was on the golf course, and there was no one in front of us. And me and my partner uh, blasted through the course. Like, blast, like just played phenomenal golf. Uh, excited about that. And I was like, ah, you know, we got a half a cigar left. And I was like, eh, you know, let's just, let's, just sit, let's just sit down near the car and put the clubs away and we'll BS and we had a couple of beers left and <laughs> all of a sudden <laughs> five minutes later the ranger comes and goes what are you doing and I was like I'm having a beer and a cigar what are you doing he's like it's COVID you have to leave afterwards so I was like oh I was like sir I totally spaced that out I'm sorry like the, I just felt normal for the past hour and a half <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I felt so normal <laughs> that I just totally yeah. slipped my mind, and and there you go. So um, <laughs> I just totally it reminds me of the time. This is a true story, where about six years ago I posted on my Facebook uh, like it does a memory, and yeah. I remember uh, showing up and I was late for golf, and I pulled into a gas station. And I jump out and I stop pumping gas, and the guy comes on and goes, "Oh, what are you doing?" I says, "I'm pumping gas." 
He goes, it's self-serve. I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't even know. Like, you know what I mean? I was like one of those things. I was, yeah, yeah. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That tells me that life is starting to get back to normal somewhat if the crazy stuff is happening to me. But that, uh, That's funny. That's funny. I was traveling one time, and you brought that up about the self, full serve, self serve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I pulled up. I guess there's a state. Uh, Jersey. I want to say or, uh, Oregon. No, okay. in Oregon. I guess you, you cannot pump your own gas. Yeah, I Jersey's out. like that. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can't pump your own gas. I'm like, okay. So I got back in my car and just let, let him do his thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's yeah. a couple of states like that. But yeah, it's just like one of those weird things. It's like, oh, yeah, weird, weird stuff is starting to happen to me. So, um, yeah. you know, I guess things are moderately trying to find some sliver of normal. And it's like I have my God up still, right? You know, I got a little right. kid. I wear a mask. Bing, bing, boom. I go to the P.O. PO box. I mean, even when I go to the P.O. box and the lobby's closed because I go earlier sometimes. Most most of the days I'm early before the lobby goes to get my day going. And, you know, yeah. even if there's nobody in there, I still wear the mask just in case anybody comes out or whatever. Bing, bing, you know, bing, bing, boom, doing what I got to do. And I just, you know, for an hour and a half, yeah. I, I let my God down. And, and you know. I'm st- I'm still having trouble of the transition between the car and the restaurant or the car and the bar because I get that look every once in a while. I'll get that look like I should, you know, wear the mask to the door, unmask, or at least mask till I get to my table or destination on the uh, bar mm. and then take it off. And then I'm assuming this is what's happening in somebody else's mind. And for me, I'm just like, okay, I'm walking in. I'm going to get ready to eat. So why am I going to put the mask on? But And then coming back out, it's the reverse. I got I guess I'm supposed to hitch this thing back on before I uh, – I guess maybe when I go to the restroom, wash my hands and get ready to leave, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So it's, I, <laughs> it, it, it honestly <laughs> happens a lot in cigar shops. I've noticed that, you know. People, yeah. um, you know, go into a cigar shop, pick out their selection. They get the mask on. Obviously, you're not smoking a cigar through a mask. Sitting down, trying to get some sense of normalcy, pulling the mask down. Bing, bang, boom. I don't know. There's a. It's it's all times that we just have to work through and be a little bit more cognizant of that. Even though things restrictions are coming up, we still definitely live in a COVID-19 world and we are going to have from some repercussions for our actions. So I definitely want to, um, you know, say that don't be stupid. Like I was just try to be cognizant of it. It can happen. Johnny, if I can get a little more audio on my headphones, that'd be great. So, uh, anyway, Drew, let's, uh, uh, we haven't done sticks in a week in a while. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've been busy. We've been busy no, with all but, these interviews. Yeah. yeah it's kinda uh, weird. It's kinda weird not to have somebody on the show today. It's it's and I was trying to trying to see if I could get some bookings done earlier or late last week, earlier this week, and it just seems like people are I guess on summer vacation, early summer vacation, so to speak. Well this, so see, yeah, this week lot, flew by for me. Like it was like yeah. Friday, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So trying to get people to answer emails or you know, if they want to come on and things like that, yeah, there was no, there was no hit. And I, you know, I noticed a lot of my friends uh, on social media; they're already on vacation already. I'm like, wow. So mm. I'm not sure if that's pretty good as of the, you know, loss of business, cut it, you know, things of that nature. I mean, not as busy, so I might as well go ahead and just take it early. Maybe take an extra week this year. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, but uh, yeah, it's been a while since we. It's just been you and me on the show. And- it's I like you and me actually. It gives me I actually like it. It it, it gives me a chance to reflect on some stuff that I have piled sure. up on to do list and and want to sure. chat about. And it gives me a chance to 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 talk to you and talk to the Story Geeks listeners. And uh, you know they they still pay attention, so uh, it's good. Oh, yeah. And June, I thank you for tuning in and watching and listening for sure to us here at the Story Geek Show. I uh, want to take some time to talk about the Diamond Crown Maduro Number Four. Um, definitely want to take some time out to explain what a potential Slack or Discord channel is. Uh, I'm still see, learning. Yep, see if that's there. We're going to get into a little bit of that. We're going to get into some sticks of the week and, and then some, some stuff that the Story Geeks listeners might need to know. Unfortunately, you sure. cannot scroll through your social media discipline without finding tons of uh, arguments that are everywhere oh. and all of that stuff. I... Put that stuff aside. Love the little mute button. Uh, yeah. That is the feature there because, you know, there's enough craziness in the world to add to some craziness. There's been some cigar industry news that other podcasts have chose to talk about uh, yeah. and and do that with the, the resignation of certain people with some companies because of yeah. some responses on social media. I'm not even discussing that. I just that's their business. That's their fight to fight. 
and um, I really don't have an, an, an opinion either way on that. I yeah. worry about us here at Stogie Geeks there, but I can tell you with raw certainty that this week like flew by for me. Uh, I did have a chance to speak to Enrique Sejas from um, 1502. He's coming on the show pretty soon. He hasn't been on in a little bit over a year, so he's going to oh, okay. give us an update uh, as nice. to that. And I found... A, um, we were doing a test call for Security Weekly, and Johnny, what was the, I know the name of the company. What was the name of that guy's name? Jason? Is it Jason? I think it's Jason. The guy from Anapsis. Yeah, yeah. So I actually been looking for this, and Paul and I have been looking for this for a while. And Paul put the feelers out in the security field, but it, 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 yeah. it, the it, 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 it's a different world, right? It, it's, mm. it's, it's just fast-paced, slammed. We're bogged down here. But Paul has always wanted to do a cybersecurity and cigar show, right? Oh, and, yeah, and, yeah. and stuff like that. So uh, Jason was on with one of our security uh, weekly shows, and he was doing a test call with Johnny. And he just started mentioning cigars. Oh, yeah, you know, I'll be smoking a cigar on the show. Is that okay? Paul does if you watch Security Weekly, all of that stuff there, too. Sure. And so he's like, oh, and I says, hey, let's talk about cigars. He's like, I would love to talk about cigars and cybersecurity. So, Drew, we're going to have, we're going to put this in the making. It's going to be July. Uh, okay. Because nice. uh, programming note, next week we might not have a show. We'll know by Monday or Tuesday. I think Johnny's yeah, yeah, yeah. taking another day off. Uh, and then we have 26th. It's Father's Day. It's Father's Day next week. Father's Day next weekend. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Either way, we can do that or whatever. And then yeah. there you go. So it will be July. So Story Geeks, we, we still got some upcoming interviews and stuff like that yeah. planned. So um, yeah. uh, And there's always a natural influx of what's going to happen. Usually this time is pretty busy because it's yeah. building up to IPCPR or PCA and building building up to new releases we'd be doing a speculation list and all we'd be starting those types of chats uh there the only thing i've heard in the industry is that uh i think it's four cigars uh companies off the top of my head are kind of doing like a world tour like a tour yeah. bus ipcpr thing um there um that's kind of interesting maybe we can spend a couple of minutes on that but without yeah. further ado drew so do you like the agenda of today it's proved yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. Mean, it's, it's, it, you know, it's it's nice. It's it's kind of like you know, let's just do this and 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 have you know some content that everybody can enjoy. So, I like it. I like this uh, freeness. You know, it's mm. like uh, you know, it's like uh, just wearing jeans. Nice. <laughs> I just got that. Okay. <laughs> nice. I just got oh, yeah. that one. That's today's uh, title. Just wearing jeans, Johnny. Just wearing jeans. It's today's man. title of the show. Okay. So right. the Diamond Crown number four Maduro. All right. I have. I've. I mean, I've spoken on this cigar plenty of times without even talking about it. So let's start with a little bit of what Drew has to say before I kind of do a rinse and repeat, because that's been a regular go-to for me for at least eight, nine months now. I've been smoking at least one one a week for sure. Yeah, that, that Diamond Crown Maduro, it's five and a half by 54. It, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've, we've had this cigar. It's, it's been a, a regular, uh, you know, uh, you know, a regular in their, in their uh, pro, uh, why not? In their wow, I was, using, I was looking for a more uh, what do you say profile? Excuse me, <laughs> portfolio. That was the word I was looking for. Portfolio it just wouldn't come to me yet. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, it's been in their portfolio for a while, so yeah, it's it's definitely a great cigar. I mean, it, you know, it's really when you look at this cigar, and it, you know, they have a natural, of course, uh, as well. Yep. But the one we were well, one we're talking about today is the Maduro. It's a wrapper, Connecticut broadleaf binder, Dominican, and the filler selection of five different fillers. Uh, from the Caribbean and Central America, uh, I believe this one is hailed from the Arturo Fuentes factory, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, I, you know, it's been rated between 90 and 93 mm -hmm. uh, through all the uh, cigar publications out there. Um, but yeah, this cigar definitely it's it's definitely one in the in the in the in the rotation, probably at least twice a month. I buy them by the box, so mm -hmm. that kind of gives you lets you know where I'm going <laughs> on the on the rating on that one. It is uh, it is a box worthy cigar for me. Uh, taste notes I get you know a little you know a little dry fruit, sweet dry fruit, uh, espresso, and then and then you get the nice earth leathery tones. Uh, Throughout the cigar, you get a little char of wood aroma, and then you do get that that 
that little bit of char of oak as well. I mean, it's I think it's within that that realm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this 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 is definitely one of those cigars that I love to go to. Um, I do share this with friends that are a little bit more on the uptick of uh, experiencing uh, a good quality cigar. Um, they, uh, you know, they've been smoking cigars for at least a few years or more. Um, it's not really, you know, a, a heavy smoker, you know, like some of the smoke content. Um, at least, you know, not not for me. I mean, I've, I've smoked some some, you know train (laughs) Mm -hmm. stacked cigars but yeah uh it's just got a to me it's got a light smoke content Mm -hmm. but uh zesty on the retro uh i've retro this i've probably retro this cigar maybe twice when i'm smoking the cigar other than that it's just a wonderful uh compliment to my collection of you know what's in my rotation uh on a monthly basis so um one of my favorites for sure a lot of favorites from a lot of people that i've spoken with at my lounge um it's just a go-to cigar and this is a a a cigar that you know if you gave one to a buddy he's still gonna like you at the end of the day that's true (laughs) that's true the only thing i would add to that it's available in four different sizes it is number three which is a six and a half by 54 the number four Mm -hmm. that we're speaking of is a five and a half by 54 as you said you have another a number five a six and a seven so you can go check out those uh sizes there um I, I like the six, five, four, and three. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, seven, I, I don't notice much. One of the things is, regardless of the size, um, you mentioned a couple of points, which I really want to focus on, because I think it's spot on. Sure. You really get a little bit of that oak. You definitely get an earthy dryness in the palate mm-hmm. of your smoke. When you retrohale it, it's not, it's actually spicier on my palate when you don't retrohale it, but it just has a little bit of a zesty zing to it, like you said, on the retrohale. So you don't have to work it to get its full flavor at all, in my opinion, there. Uh, I use a bullet cut. Most of the time, it would be either a bullet cut or a V. I have paired this thing countlessly with Bloody Marys, for sure. Mm. Uh, I paired it right now for today's show. I'm smoking it right now. With a couple of IPAs, so um, super cool. It's different with an IPA. I like a little bit better with spicy for the Bloody Mary, but it's COVID times, and I didn't feel like pre-making stuff and and following and making a mess and doing all of that, so I just grabbed two IPAs, and uh, we'll call it a day, right? Yeah, I I I paired it. I'm I'm not smoking today because I'm in the house, if, if any of you are watching, because if I smoke in the castle, Del Barbara, that's my wife's name. I, I, I will be in trouble. Sure. <laughs> and it's too hot outside, so I definitely didn't want to have the meat sweats so while I'm out there. But uh, but I am drinking the uh, uh, a dark oatmeal stout. Mm. Um, this is what, is what I would pair with this at this time of the season uh, here in Texas uh, with the cigar. Uh, so uh, I'm halfway there. I just don't have the smoke in my hand. But yeah. Yep. Plus, if you were outside, I, I don't know if you get like I do. Like if it's hot out, like I don't really like the, some of the thick porters or stouts. But if you're yeah. in AC and you're comfortable, they're awesome. We have an yep. awesome local uh, brewery here called the Lime Cider. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a a Patriots player, expatriates player, who who's one of the partners in it, and they make a freaking graham cracker porter. So it's supposed to taste like s'mores. It, I yeah. had that last night. It is freaking phenomenal. And something oh, like man. a porter or 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 a stout would go very good with with this cigar uh, there too. And yeah. of course, can't go wrong with the famous Bloody Mary or. Some, some, believe it or not, some of the red wine, because the yeah. retro hail with the red wine on your palate is going to really mm-hmm. kick up that kind of zestiness there too. So, uh, very yeah, versatile I, cigar, total box yeah. worthy, no question. Like yeah, box worthy for sure. Yeah. And just yeah, on the other side of the spectrum, as as far as my drink pairing on this, is I, I go with the spiced rum, because you do get some of that. That's it, it, there's a spice in the cigar, but it's not really like uh, complex or anything like that. I mean, it doesn't. It's not nuance. It's just there. Mm-hmm. So when you do when you do have this, uh, when you do get a spice rum with that, uh, you definitely you it's it, it, it's it definitely enjoyable with that with that 
sweet dry fruit that you get. And I, and I'm not the only one. I thought, for, you know, I thought it was just my pal, but I've talked to other uh, uh, people who have who have enjoyed this uh, stogie, um, and they're like, yeah, it's it's definitely got like a, a sweet fruit dry fruit to it. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, the spice rum is my other favorite good to go. Uh, yeah, usually the go. some of the Connecticut broadleafs have been going good with with some spice rum. For sure, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I'm I'm a with spiced rum, I'm a straight up, like straight up rum. You know what I mean? Yeah, if it's, that's if what it's, I do. Yeah, you yeah. know, sometimes yeah. I I do the sometimes I get oh. cravings for like a rum coke, like because yeah, I, I I don't have soda in my house. It's not a rule or anything. We just don't drink. We, so, don't we just don't have soda, right? You know, yeah. there's too much wine in the house or or <laughs> craft beer to be honest with you. And with the little yeah. kid, he hasn't been exposed to soda or so good. He gets chocolate ice cream or, or Oreos. Um, by the way, Oreos in the car for the kid do not mix sometimes in the summer. Just I learned that Tuesday. <laughs> what happened? I'm sorry. What was Oreos and the kid in the car. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally nice. like, and, and the way I picked them up, like I didn't have any of the the naps. Like if you we went to the bathroom or someplace, I would have naps, right? But the, the what the baby wipes, right? But yeah. I, I was just a quick errand, so I just freaking got some Oreos for him. It says, you know, I was watching them. It's like we're gonna do yeah. pizza and Oreos, yeah, right. We're gonna have we we had a thing like like when 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 Bethany was pregnant, we would always do dessert before dinner, and yeah. we have that now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so like nice. there's sometimes like, Hayden, we're going to go get ice cream before we do pizza or dinner. And he gets like yeah. super pumped. Like, oh my God. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just <laughs> kind of like a family kooky summer thing we do. Right. So I yeah. gave him Oreos. I was like, we're going to do dessert. And Oreos. was like, yeah, yeah. High five. You know, doing all of that. You know, you're getting the kid all amped up. And I, oh, yeah. and, and I, <laughs> I go around the car to go pick him up. I'm like, whoa. I ran in the house, got a wet nap, but I was like, wet nap at him first. Because I was like, because if I pick him up, right, now he's going to have to touch me. I'm like, no. That's a... <laughs> Just FYI, <laughs> I'm, parenting. I'm going to make that a goal with my grandson, Mateo. I'm going to take him. I have not done that yet as a grandparent. And what, ice cream? No, get him, get him amped up and then oh. get him all like. You know, full of energy, and then give him back to his mom. We well, know dad. what it is. You know what it is. Sometimes, <laughs> you know what it is. I mean, he's he's just about approaching two, right? So yeah. we're we're having conversations, right? And and he he's he's a great kid. Don't get me wrong, but there are some times where you know the kids are a kid and they're just uh, yeah. relentless, right? And he is by sure his father's son. So as relentless as I can be on a topic, he's like 10 times worse, right? So he gets it from me. His mother's freaking yeah. like, you know, ah, whatever. You know what I mean? Me, I'm like freaking. <laughs> right? So he's the same way. So anyway, <laughs> it started off like, I'm like, come on, let's do this. Yeah, high five, you know? And it's amazing because I gave him the cookie, right? This might yeah. be, this is stuff you might need to know, right? I gave him the cookie. Or cookies. He only had two, right? Two Oreos, right? Two yeah. in the car. Then we came home, gave him the wet nap, threw him in the high chair, had pizza. Right? It was guy night, right? Had yeah. pizza. And I think the pizza, like, negated the sugar high. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. Right? Because he had tons of pizza. The I bread. even did a bonus. I was like, Mom's not home. We're going to watch Sesame Street, right? Boom. Yeah. For the win, right? Everything he likes. Oreos, Sesame Street, and pizza for the yeah. win, right? Get him all of that. Boom. Eight o'clock comes by. I'm like, yeah, you know, you got to start saying goodnight to Elmo. We got to get going to bed. Dad's going to read you a story. He's like, okay, daddy. And then boom, bang, right to bed with Oreos. So I think, I think I'm on to something with the dessert before dinner. Good formula. <laughs> Hopefully you wrote that down. Uh, no, I've uh, that that happened before. Cause oh my god, when she was pregnant with Kaden, she'd be like, I just want ice cream, and she would get like freaking ice cream, right? And I'm I'm just I'm same old. I'm small chocolate with chocolate yeah. jimmies. That's it. No matter where we go, same thing. I go to the same thing. I'm very boring, right? According to her, I don't try anything new. It's 57 flavors. I'm not experimenting on flavors. I love chocolate. We're good. I don't eat a lot of ice cream anyway. So uh, it's a treat. Believe me, I'm happy. We're having ice cream. And right. and so we've always done ice cream before. And then we would go out to eat. And even when she was pregnant, like, she would order appetizers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because she had so much ice cream. And then, you know, I was like, ah, whatever. And, I'm, and I'd eat. And then there you go. So that's how that right. all started. It's a right. kooky ice family cream. thing. I, yeah, ice cream is definitely a staple in my house. Well, it's just me and my wife and my dog. But, but yeah, it's definitely a staple. I mean, we have Blue Bell ice cream here it's from Texas. And it's just, you know, it's made with all the good stuff that's natural. <laughs> 
yeah. <laughs> so so to speak, uh, butter, cream, you know, what else? Sugar. <laughs> yeah. We, we got it made. So. But he knows that he's. it's a treat because he has the ice cream. He's like, whoa, whoa. Like he gets gets all amped up. So, yeah. Nice. So there you go. So now you, you know what to do. Now you can, nice. you know. Yeah, I know what to do. Want me to go into my second cigar? No, I was going to say, if you don't know what to do, just call his parents. They can pick them up. That's the joy of becoming grandparents. That's true. That's that's that's, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, dude. I, that's that that's the best part. It's like okay, you know. But yeah, I got to get them all amped up without my wife knowing it, and then uh, you know. Gotcha. See if I see if I can get away with it. <laughs> yeah, give me the second stick, and then and then we'll get into some other stuff. All right. So the second stick is probably at the bottom of my list, uh, as you got my list over there. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be the Oscar Valadares uh, Wild Hunters Oscuro Six by Fifty Two. So yeah, I, I was presented this stick, and then you know by my, by my uh, brick and mortar owner, <laughs> my lounge, <laughs> and uh, you know he's like, yeah, you know it seems to be doing pretty well in sales and things of that nature, and um, so yeah, so he gave me this uh, stick, Wild Hunter by Oscar. Uh, it's a dark scroll cigar. Uh, it's a second of the uh, uh, of a of a, uh, of two, so they also have a Toro, and. Uh, Wild Hunters uh, in the Wild Hunter selection. So uh, st- strength on this, they they were, they were touting as medium to full. The wrappers, Honduras, binder Honduras, so filler Honduras. So that pretty much makes up the cigar. And as you can probably tell by my tone, uh, you know, I'm not really excited about this cigar, but it, whatever. Um, it's not a bad cigar. It's just not a cigar for me. Mm-hmm. So let me just get that out of the way. There, You know, the taste notes on this was, you know, it's earthiness, a lot of earthiness, uh, some hay uh, it, that did have some leather components uh, at some point, and then some sweet spice came through, some espresso, and then some spice that I could not put my hands on or put my taste palette to and just kind of recall in my brain. So uh, it did have some tobacco sweetness, uh, some nuttiness or some nuts uh, and, and then chocolate. So yeah, this, you know, I, I, I got two and they both smoked, you know, the same. Um, they, some of the, you know, they, they, there was a run in the burn, you know, during the burn and I tried to correct it and things of that nature, but I had to correct it a few times. But that's not that's not why I'm saying that this cigar is 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 a try one in the Stubby Geeks rating because that's what it's going to be for me is a try one. I think you were a little bit more generous than I was, uh, but yeah, this cigar just it just it just lacked uh, it lacked character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I remember the conversation. I called you on my way into work one one morning, and I was like, "Yo, yeah. what up?" And you're like, "Yo, man, I'm sitting in the cigar and I'm reviewing a stick." I go, "What is it?" And you told me. I go, "Ah, it's a fiver." Mm-hmm. <laughs> throw it out, it's a fiver, and yeah. you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, it's my first one, my first one, my first one. I was like, ah, you know, you just, you know, it, it the, yeah, you know, and, and again, it it, 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 somebody might or some people might like those, and and yeah. and and that's why when you're tasting sticks, you know, if you keep a journal or mental notes or whatever, it's good for you to know what you have. It's good for you to try it. There are so many yeah. other offerings that I think from that company that are really awesome. That I yeah. just think it just you know it came out and they they tried something and you know we'll yeah. we'll, we'll find out uh, from our previous interview with Steve Saka we'll find out in a couple of years if it's still on the shelf or not <laughs> you know what I mean and that, yeah. <laughs> that's you know uh, yeah. I told I told Mr. Saka I said I'm gonna be using a lot of quotes from your interview so you yeah. know what I mean like you know well we'll just see in a couple of years and and then 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 let the the public speak so. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just, you know, I mean, I saw the fanfare when this cigar came out and, and things of that nature. But like I said, it just didn't live up to the full hype that I think. I mean, it's not really a hype. It just didn't live up to my expectations is what I thought would a true Honduras. Because this is, a, I guess you would say, a puro Honduras cigar. And mm-hmm. it just, you know, and it just didn't, uh, it didn't just, you know, I, some other uh, reviewers gave it, you know, a higher a higher rating than than I believe I did, and that's that's fine. I get, you know, I, I get it, you know. But uh, uh, you know, we, we we you and I have talked about behind the scenes about some cigar manufacturers kind of kind of you know just kind of putting things out there, maybe changing a wrapper uh, to change you know the profile, mm-hmm. but but not, nothing bad on that i mean it everybody does uh does uh, those things at one time or another um but you know it's just that this one here just didn't work for me so here's um, a point i want to bring up how did you try one that yeah. that cigar you bought from your local brick and mortar right 
Mm -hmm. Did it come from recommendation from your brick and mortar? Uh, I was asked if I tried one. Gotcha. And you said no, so then you had one. Okay, great. Yeah, here's, so here's, just... a, here, here's the point of my conversation, which kind of is why I'm glad that we have this kind of loose end uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, open forum, I guess you could say. Anything can happen Friday, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. there you, go. Um, you know, I wonder oh. if, and again, I'm not picking on any, any type of shop owner. I wonder if the shop owner bought it um, to try it, or if the shop owner bought it because they thought in their mind one, two, three, four, five, ten customers, whatever their number is, mm -hmm. wouldn't would enjoy it. Yeah. And my the point of that conversation is, and I had this dis I had this discussion on Wednesday. Wednesday I worked, but I worked from a cigar shop, right? I didn't go physically into work. And so and I was talking and I was like they're like, Jojo, what do you think of us bringing this in? I go, who, who would it sell to? They go, what do you mean? I says, no, can you name your right. members? Half, would half your members smoke it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You have to know. And, and that's yeah. the point of my conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, to get it because it's new. And, and, and I've noticed that where they get it because it's new or because it's new from Oscar at that particular point in time or it's new or they want to keep the brand. And sometimes they buy the new to take care of the other. And again, retail, we can have countless conversations with retailers on this, right? We can have, yeah. we can have, we should probably get a couple of them. Uh, they've been sprouting out up all over Facebook, that whole zoom hearth thing sure. and whatnot from, from, from COVID. But we should probably yeah. consider for a future interview, getting a couple key retailers in there and talking about like, like purchasing, like when they go to a trade show, okay. Or yeah. when they went to not in 2020 and they go like, and somebody pitches something. Do you buy it because it's them, or do you buy it? That, and some you do, right? As right. as as reiterated in last week's episode, for sure. But you know, like you know, and and, and like I told the shop owner, unless you can you can n name half your members that are gonna buy it, why would you get it? Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? And and and, exactly. and and is there a demand? And I'm not picking on that particular brand. It's no. just a it's just a gen the the idea of Stogie Geeks. I think, and then what goes on in my head, so if I'm miscommunicating with the audience, email Drew at storygeeks.com, right? Yeah. If I'm miscommunicating, <laughs> if I'm miscommunicating, but, but like, you know, what goes on in the consumer's head, right? And what goes on in the right. shop owner's head, and maybe when they watch this and tune into the show, they they can kind of come together, and I think that, that, that that's important, because a lot of people just buy stuff randomly, and it sits on the shelves, and then they wonder why, and it's like, well, there's no demand, you gotta know your consumer's product. Yeah. Speaking yeah, of which, I'm setting myself up for my next stick of the week, right? Yeah. Setting myself up for the next stick of the week. <laughs> I, I smoke a lot of sticks here, okay? And, and believe me, half of what I smoke don't even get to the show, right? Uh, just because of bandwidth. It just, just I'm busy, you know, yep. to, to take the time out to do that, and I select the ones, and away we go, right? And I have are got... What? I was going to say, are you sure... It's not just you uh, hoarding the cigar in your humidor. <laughs> no, God, no, Mike. I'm, a, I'm just still walking. I still walk around with a freaking plastic bag. I walk oh, around. No, yeah. I still walk around yeah. with a freaking plastic bag with no Bovita pack or anything like that. I don't get into that. I've walked. You know the sticks you've had. You sent me. Like for example, oh, yeah. you sent me. I have these sitting there. They have not been. They have not been in humidification since you've sent them to me. Oh wow! But they're still soft because if you keep them yeah. in the console of your car and you live in the northeast, you're fine. Okay. Right, exactly. Anyway, exactly. right? <laughs> anyway, this other one you sent me because I had the other one. I had the Baba Pole one, right? Yeah. That's BMC. Yeah, BMC. Yeah, right. I had the Baba Pole one. I'm like, ah, okay. I'm interested in Yeho. Honestly, the only reason why I haven't tried it, size. Yeah, it's a big. Size. I, 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 it, it's size. So size. Six, so 16? so yeah. how it comes into into me this is just me right i'm just trying to let the story geeks listener if you're listening or watching what goes on in my head when i try to present something to you and there so i have came across the uh hoyo de monterey epicura selection oh, i'm jealous jealous let me tell you something this thing can not only not only did it come in the uh the 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 size of five and six tenths by forty six, all right. That's the number one. The number two is um, 
is a four and nine tenths by fifty. I love these numbers, right? And the Toro yeah. Special is obviously a Toro six by fifty. Available in twenty count boxes. Readily available. Jorge de Monterey puts them out, and I and I'm like, huh, okay. Why did it catch me size wise? I'm like, interesting size, right? Weird. The 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 shape the the regular classic way, right? But the sizes yeah. were a little off. I'm like, yo, something. I'm gonna fire it up. Not thinking anything, bullet the smallest one. Bullet cut it very nicely because it's a smaller ring gauge, right? Bullet cut it, bing, bing, boom, light it up, and I'm like, I'm working. All of a sudden, I'm like, stop, stop the boat. Yeah. What the hell am I smoking? This thing rocks, <laughs> right? I was and so it caught, it caught my attention. Then I'm like, okay. You know what I, you, you know right. what I've been locked on on what? some of these cigars, because like, yeah. I know the cigar you're talking about is the is the caps. I've, I've been locked in the caps. I don't know why. I've been having this fast this this yeah this this thing about the triple cap, this, the double cap, mm-hmm. you know. And I just been you know I've been playing with that. But anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just wanted to let no. You know. well, what what's your thought on that? You can scatter brain. That's fine. Friggin', what are you no, gonna no. Do? I, you know when I like when I bullet cut. You know I, I you know like cause I've, I've been using my bullet cut a lot lately. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it's because I'm smoking a lot of the triple caps mm-hmm. and some of the double cap, just depending on how strong the wrapper is or how strong the wrap, the cap has been, you know, laid on. So, but I've been finding that the caps that I've been bowling cutting lately have, uh, um, it just, it, it definitely, there's a difference there. If Because normally I deep V cut all my cigars. Yep. I'll guarantee cut some of the larger ring gauges, you know, uh, but on uh, you know, most of the time I'm a robusto. Uh, I'm in the robusto size. Um, but yeah, the with these double and triple caps, uh, I've been noticing that um, I've been doing the bullet cut with these, and I don't know why I've been hyper focusing on those. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you like the bullet cut? It's different. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was my different. first. Yeah, that was my first. That was my first cut. Like that was my first when I first started smoking cigars. That's all. That I would do everything bullet cut. Yep. And yeah. I think I got into the DV cuts only because of the larger ring gauge size, or ring gauge sizes mm-hmm. uh, to get more of a tunnel vision smoke content into, you know, during my draws. Yeah. Where with the bullet cut, it's more. You don't have to really take a real big draw. You just got to take a nice medium draw, and then you're good, mm-hmm. and you're able to cycle that, uh, you know, within your mouth, and then you know, release it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. So anyway, right? So yeah. I got gotcha, you, right? Uh, rapid binder filler is all Honduran. Um, let me tell you something. Like, go out and find these, right? Go like go out and find these, Story Geeks listener. It is the Hoyo de Monterey Epicure Selection. It is freaking tasty. It is. Mm. It, it 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 it's tasty. It's got a spiciness to it. It's it, it's 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 unique from coming from a classic facing company, right? One that's been around forever, right? Yeah. Um. It it it's got a a, a, a edginess to it for Hoyo de Monterey, right? Almost, I would say, Cuban esque as far as the mm. edginess of it, right? It's an edgy yeah. cigar. It's not over. The first inch is going to be pretty spicy, and you're like, oh wow, but then it mellows right in. And I've given these away blind to shop owners. Like taking off the label and say, "Here, try yeah. this." Like you know, I take off the label. Like I take it off in front of them. Like I'm, you know, it's COVID times, right? I say, "Can yeah. I give you a cigar?" I'm gonna take off the label. You let me know what it is. Well, what is it? Yeah. Like, what you think about? And I'm like, holy <laughs> cow! And I'm like, right? I'm like, right? Like, yeah. And like, well, what is it? I go, "Holy tomato rain." They're like, no way. I'm like, yeah. I'm telling you, because it's got a little bit of an edge to it. There's a little bit of a spicy edge to it. You're gonna get some grass. You're gonna get a little bit of earth smoke content, dryness in the smoke, right? But it's yeah. got a spice to it. I can't put my finger on it um, quite yet. All I know is I have burned through at least 10 of these things. Like, nice. gone. Like, completely gone. Love them. They're box-worthy for sure. They're available in boxes of 20. I don't, I'd be lying to you if I even knew the price. Like, didn't even, didn't even um, uh, look, a, look it up and, and stuff like that. So, But it's hard to Monterey, so it's going to be priced with, within whatever they're their profile ranges there but yeah. check them out man um if you've had them still geeks listeners email me and drew let us know uh I'd be happy to he- hear if 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 you did they came out this year yeah so uh you know 
um, in regards to new stuff from an old world brand, there you go. It's a chance to uh, yeah. to to try it. I do not think you would be disappointed. So I'd yeah. give it box worthy for sure. Yeah, I was I was saying earlier I was jealous because I I've been trying to find those and locate those here in Texas. Obviously, either one or two things. Either I'm not looking hard hard enough. Or they're just not available here in my region, but it should be. You know, I would imagine, like, I would imagine, probably, let's just be honest, it, it's probably yeah. an online catalog thing. Not yeah. exclusively, but there are a lot of, because as soon as I told the shop owner who it was, it was like, yeah, yeah. well, I'm not going to get them. Really? <laughs> really? Like, like yeah. you just said that you could name, unlike your other cigar, Right, because remember we had that conversation before I kicked off the stick. You just yeah. said that you could find ten members that that would have this cigar. Why, 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 why wouldn't you put it in? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Oh, okay. Well, have them go online, have them like it and find it, and guess what? When they want those, they'll go online, and then that'll cut into the time that they go into your brick and mortar, and then you'll you'll complain about COVID and how it's bad. <laughs> oh yeah, that's always <clears throat> that's always a sidebar. Mm-hmm. Well, my second cigar I had is the Cuesta Rey uh, from J.C. Newman Cigar. Uh, it's a Central Fino Sun Grown Toro, number 60. Uh, so you sent me this cigar. Uh, I think I got it, what, maybe four weeks ago? Yep. And I smoke, I saw it. I'm like, oh, man, finally. I've been trying to get one of these. So I smoked it, and I'm like. It's a Sun Grown, right? I know you said dude, it, yeah. Yes, yeah, yep. yeah. yeah it's yep. <laughs> oh man, banging, I, banging, dude. I banging. called, I called everybody. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, <laughs> it is, it is completely off the charts. Oh yeah, so I, not, I called everybody that I know, so I can get some more, and I did. Mm-hmm. So I got a box. Of, I got a box of these bad boys. Yep, and they're, they're in regular production. Yep. I just had, I just had to make a few phone calls. Got him. And now I'm happy. Right. But this cigar, yeah. And oh by the way, Story Geeks, that cigar is not going to break the bank either. No. Not at all. Drew uh, will but, elaborate. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this this cigar, you know, it, it's been in their regular uh, 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 portfolio for some time. And um, you'll, if you just go to the website, you'll definitely see the history on the cigar. Uh, and, but yeah, so uh, it's uh, Dominican Republic uh, uh, is where it's from. Uh, wrapper Ecuadorian Sumatra binder filler is Dominican Republic. Uh, man, <laughs> at first, so I look at the cigar. Cigar as well, you know, nice constructed. It's got a little roughness to it as far as the the leaf, the veins, and things of that nature. But not not a, not not a bad looking cigar. It just it looks you know rustic, but in a good way. I mean, it looks like something that came probably out of cuba so i mean that's how so that was my first that was my first thing and then you know of course the band you know i went through the band looked at it um i i don't take off my bands until there's enough heat on the cigar where i'm at on the last third for it to self loosen from the uh uh pectin or glue and then remove the band naturally but yeah you're talking about man you're talking about classic you know cedar wood uh some pepper um, there was a, there was a herbal is what I'm going to call it as a herbal note that was there. I couldn't really put my mind on it until after I had gotten my box, my new box in. <laughs> so like citrus. Yeah, yeah. Like a, yeah. So I got those notes there and then the cinnamon, uh, kind of a fruit of cherries. Uh, and I'm talking about the pitted cherries, uh, you know, somebody, I said something about cherries to somebody one day, I think it was a few, uh, but a week and a half gone there. Oh, maraschino cherries. I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> no, we're not having a cocktail here. I'm having a cigar. So, uh, but yeah, uh, some mocha. Uh, uh, again, it was back in the fruit in the second half. And then from there, it just started to really get to the journey of my, you know, my favorite uh, um, profiles of coffee, pepper. and But it was on the tame side. The pepper was on the tame side. Yep. So. At that point, I really couldn't call it zesty, but it, there was a little pepper there because I, I definitely, when I did the retro and then I just went through my regular repertoire of smoking my cigar, and and I and I revisit my cigar again. I, I I'm I'm a slow smoker. I it you know I, I I'm between one and a half to one, two minutes between draws, and that's just to make sure it cools you know in my mind, 
let it rest, let it do its thing, and then go back and, and take another draw again. Um, uh, but yeah, man, this this cigar is, man, it is heaven. It is definitely. And heaven. you never had one until I sent it to you. No, you, I never had yeah. one. I've, I've seen it. I, 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 I've, I've uh, had other friends have experienced it. I just haven't. And when you sent it to me, I was like, oh, man. This yeah, is I crazy. think most of what I sent you is stuff I like. Yeah, like mo, like I would say, like ninety eight percent of what I sent you is like, it's like, dude, like this is like what I think is like super cool stuff. And, oh yeah, and I know that that was in it, and 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 my experience with that stick, uh, God, it was last year. Um, J C Newman sent us a box like last <laughs> last calendar year, and they came in. And I was like, oh yeah, cool, sun grown, whatever, right? You know what yeah. I mean? And, and, and again. I, I look at it from a consumer perspective first and a stogie geek host second, right? Yeah. And I can separate those in my mind very easily, right? And I, and I was like, ah, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the Gusta Ray. It's been around for a while. They got into yeah. some sun grown. Yeah, I'll get to it. And I remember having it, and I was like, holy crap. Like, I remember <laughs> I, 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 I ran into Paul's <laughs> office, right? And I was like, dude. Yeah. Did you have these? He's like, those been sitting there. Who, 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 did you get a box? I said, no, JC Newman sent us a box. You got to have it. You got to have it. And he's like, yeah, dude, it, it, it's 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 good. It's a good stick. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it what, $8? $8, dollars, eight dollars, you know, bearing yeah, any $8 tax where you're from. Uh, yeah. I want to say the box cost me. Buck 10 or something like that. It's yeah, really, it, was yeah. Like and, yeah. it was like 135 by the time it was all said and done. Sure. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, there was there was nothing. I mean, I mean, to me, it was just like, wow, this is. What a great value! What a great cigar! Mm -hmm. What a classic cigar! And you smoke them all to the nub, like everyone uh, I've yeah. had is just awesome. Exactly, and that was the other thing too. I mean, I, and I and I went, and like I said, and I I intentionally let this cigar do its thing on its own. Uh, you know, I didn't go to any of the uh, J.C. Newman. Uh, what do you call message boards or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, typically, yeah. I'll go through there and just kind of. Spoke it with someone, excuse me, uh, and and just kind of see if we can match notes. But, but yeah, you're talking about yeah a classic cigar. I mean, they mm -hmm. they definitely hit it right out of the, right out of the park with this one, mm -hmm. and I can see why you know it, it, it is something that's going to be around for a while. The uh, what got me too once once I smoked, I went and started reading their 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 history on this one. It's a uh, you know, it features a hearty blend of five year aged Dominico Lajero, You know, which is if y'all have listened to me in the last. Almost in the whole past last year, I've been on the show. Uh, La Hero is one of my favorite, uh, you know, tobacco uh, filler in, in, in the tobaccos. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, when I read that, I'm like, ah, oh, okay. So that's why uh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, not only that, but just, just, just the, 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 that herbo. Like I was saying, that herbo flavor, that note, that note I was getting was there uh but it was more of a citrus side mm -hmm. uh, yeah that that right there was it, it, it explained and unlocked a couple things in my brain and i'm like okay so um and i knew at that point my my, my flavor profile just grew you know by a smidge but yeah mm -hmm. it's definitely a good cigar i definitely recommend it to to everyone out there my uh my my rationale of sending that to you was mm -hmm. to give you a definition of balance. Yes. You know what I mean? Exactly. I know I feel like Mr. Miyagi, but like every cigar I sent you, I can come back and say that was what I was thinking. Like like yeah. balance. Balance and flavor and slow burning and doesn't break the bank. And like hardly, I don't say hardly anybody knows about it. It's a big brand, right? I don't want to yeah. downplay, but like, you know, like, wow. And then... Yeah. I'm like, okay, uh, um, that's cool. I wonder, I got to check my Story Geeks notes. I wonder, because we have different um, uh, Q2, nope, Diamond Crown Maximus, nope, and La Gusta Ray, Central Fina, no. Okay, it's not in the rotation of Sticks of the Week, that yeah. JT Newman yeah. wants us to do uh, yeah. there, but um, it damn well should be. <laughs> yeah. So we just did an extra one. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I'm box worthy all day for those. Yeah, those are definitely box worthy. Yep. Uh, can't go wrong with that stick. You know, when you said when you said uh, Mr. Miyagi, the first thing that came to my mind when you said balance 
was when Daniel was put out in the ocean by Mr. Miyagi Fair on up. that wood, wooden post. Yeah. And he said, balance, balance. And the waves are all crashing and all yeah, that man. other stuff. Yeah. That's God. That if, you're, if I'm not aging myself, that's how old I am. No, actually, I, I <laughs> honestly, there's an ongoing joke at Churchill's that when I have, when I commandeer the TV, it's yeah. either Karate Kid. This is true. It was played yeah. as of Wednesday, right? Karate Kid, <laughs> Andy Griffith, or horse racing. There you go. And <laughs> I was watching it. I come in, and Uncle Jimmy comes in. He goes, oh, you're watching Karate Kid again. I was, I love this. <laughs> and I, I watched it on Sunday. I mean, I was working and whatnot. It was on the background. But I'm like, yeah, man. I was yeah. like, hold on. This is a good pot. He's going to learn balance. You know? Oh, yeah. Learn how to balance. Then he goes back, and the guy, and, and he chops the bottles. He's like, how'd you do that? I don't know. First time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you you learn a lot from that stuff, man. If people could be just freaking fu- internally centered and relaxed, I think the world would be a much better place. Exactly. But anyway, that would be the purpose for us to have a Discord or a Slack channel. Yeah. Right? So, Story Geeks listeners, there are two products that we use here at Security Weekly. For those of you who don't know, we produce... Uh, seven other shows in cybersecurity weekly on a Monday through Friday schedule. Besides Stogie Geeks, you go to securityweekly.com. You can check them all out. There you go. So when it comes to podcasting, leveraging, marketing of product, blah, 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 we, we, Paul and company, has, he has a phenomenal story to be told, for sure, especially in the yeah. cybersecurity field. And with that being said, we use two products that are offline. Um, one for, internal for us is Slack, right? Um, and then another one is Discord. Here's the purpose of the channel. If you email me, joeh at stogiegeeks.com, I will assign something. I will set it up. And it's basically kind of like a chat room that yeah. we would be able to communicate off, on, off air. Like, for example, if I run out of time and I start to get edgy on previous interviews, that's because I have my Slack open. And Johnny's communicating with me 10 minutes left or whatever because there's yeah. certain, um, unlike logging on to Facebook and filming your Zoom meeting and going live and calling that a podcast, there's an actual podcast methodology timing-wise, which we are being educated as outside of the Story Geeks field, but more in the Security Weekly listen, which is why some of the interviews, I don't want to say have been cut short, but if you historically listen to Story Geeks, they've been cut shorter uh, there because we like to stay into a certain amount of time for, for that. A lot of it's bandwidth download. I'll spill you with all of that uh, stuff there too and listener stats and all of that there. So anyway, yeah. so um, if it, it's a great way to keep the conversation going all week long ask a question for one of the hosts, share a story, you can post pictures, you could get with friends and, and you chat on the channel and stuff like that. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. If we get enough uh, activity on that, we could do an inter- interactive segment where, you know, you'll if we have a guest on, so for example, last week when we had Steve Sacco on, you'd be able to come into either Slack or Discord. Uh, I'm thinking Slack to start off with. Uh, yeah. And then if it gets rowdier and bigger, we can switch over to Discord. It's an easy transition to go to both. You don't going to be that technically inclined. If you know how to use Facebook, you know how to use it there. But it's a great way to go back and forth or, hey, I want to share this experience with, with some people. Or, hey, I want to you know ask a cocktail questions. You set up different channels. We can talk drink recipes. We can talk cigars. We can divide it up by region. We can do a whole oh. bunch of super cool stuff if you wanted to do that. Here's the point of it. If you are interested in it, Story Geeks, because it is a little bit of time consuming when it comes to doing that, but it's a great interactive tool and you want to interact with me and Drew either during the show or throughout the week or whichever, as opposed to doing it the old fashioned way, which is to flash me an email, blah, 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 and I get back to you. I do my best to return all of the emails. They do get returned within four or five business days. Uh, We are crazy that busy, so I apologize for that delay. But it's a great way for you to do that. If you're interested in that, email me at joeh at storygeeks.com. I will throw all of your emails in a folder. We get probably 10, 15, 20 in a week. We're going to launch it, and we'll let you know with further promotions as to how to join. And then in the episode notes as we move forward, so for example, the next 10 shows, 10 shows from now will be 342. 
those notes to join the Discord channel or Slack channel, depending on how we go. We'll go in there. So if you're interested in that, Story Geeks, let us know. If you're not, no worries. We're just It's a super cool, interactive way. I can tell you with experience, I've used it on the Security Weekly side, and it's so cool to talk with customers or uh, vendors or uh, Security Weekly listeners about stuff and that channel. So if you ever want a test node, you can go to securityweekly.com and join on the Security Weekly to get an idea. But like you get, we have like a career tab, uh, uh, drink cocktail recipes, because for those of you who watch Paul's Security Weekly, they like to smoke cigars, drink cocktails, talk about cybersecurity. So, you know, it's and it's got all different things. And as different topics come up, different regions we can create moderators so maybe in the future a listener can participate in that in that stuff there too anyway if you're interested there you go let let us know and we will do it and if not then it's one less thing that i have to worry about which either way <laughs> yeah no i i think it i think it'll be fun uh to have an interactive uh channel for these for our listeners because you know like when, I, when we're on facebook live or excuse me um well, on uh, youtube live uh i typically follow the live chat and sometimes people will pop a question and i want to answer but yeah to do the discord or the slack channel that'd be pretty much a, a little bit easier mm-hmm. and and a lot more a lot more interactive johnny our producer is all for for discord i discord, I, I, okay. I don't either one work for me like either one okay. work for me i just want to compile if we have a nucleus of participants then we'll, we'll point them in that right direction you'll get an email sure. back Having you sign up, bing, bing, boom, you pick a username and, and away you go. And for those yeah. of you who are using it, I just think it's an, another innovative tool for yeah. us to interact with the story geeks. And what I like about it is like the only people in that channel would be people who are interested in, in doing that. And, that, and again, it, it, it's not that we're going to be having any conversations that I wouldn't have on Facebook. I just, you know, f- everybody's bombarded by that and, 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 and what Facebook is there and all of that there and all their channels. And COVID had escalated a huge influx of uh, let me record my Zoom video online and get my cigar information out. Sure. As a consumer, we're just flooded with it. But if you want to talk exclusively to Stoya Geeks about Stoya Geek stuff, the option's there for you. Let us know. Yeah. Joe H. at yeah. All right, yeah. Drew, give me another stick. All right, so my next stick we're going to talk about here is going to be uh, the Dominican San Latano. Mm. Of course, A.J. Fernandez mm-hmm. and uh, Jockey Blanco uh, were involved in this as a blenders in the cigar. Uh, so this one here is the uh, second. Uh, so this collaboration is available in five sizes. It's Corona, Robusto, Toro, and Gran Toro. Uh, this cigar features a uh, wrapped in a Brazilian Habano uh, binder and filler. Going to be Dominican Republic uh, binder is going to be Dominican Republic filler. Is going to be Nicaragua Dominican Republic uh, blender. AJ Fernandez, Jockey Blanco, manufactured tobacco uh Palma, and country of origin on this one. It's going to be Dominican Republic. Uh, you know this cigar. You know they have the other cigar. The the one I was saying last year that should be the should have been number one cigar of the year. But on um, this one here is a blue band. It's a blue band, and it's just uh, you know, it, it's. I gave it a fiver, and I'll tell you why. I, you know, the it just didn't really, it didn't really transition well. Um, I thought, in my opinion, as the other cigar did. Uh, the it's got notes of wood. Uh, you get a woody note. You get a coffee note. Uh, you get some cocoa, and then you get some caramel and toasted nuts, and that's it. I mean, that's all I got out of this cigar. And I spent time with the cigar. I spent time with two sticks. And again, I'm not, I'm not disappointed of it because, like I said, it, it it did get a fiber. It just wasn't really, it just really wasn't, you know, as as exciting as the other. Uh, cigar they had um, before, uh, in the in, in the one I was saying it was a uh, cigar of the year last year. And I wish I would have put some notes there so I can read those off, but I didn't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a robusto five by fifty, and um, yeah, just pretty much was that cigar didn't really get me you know excited as their their first offering mm-hmm. in the in the in the San Latino, uh Maduro is the one. Yeah, is the is the is the one 
And I'm sorry, I got so many cigars up in this Rolodex up here that I have no. To kinda... I think I think the Maduro is where it's at in regards to comparing yeah. those two. You yeah, know? So, yeah, the Deme- yeah, this one here just wasn't. It didn't really hit the hit hit it out of the park. It was more of a double. You know, it it, it, it got hit into a double play. And that was it. Cool. <laughs> Talk about baseball. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, I, I definitely I gave it a fiver though because I mean there's 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 some uh, I've talked to others uh, in my in my circle who have smoked a cigar and, and they 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 uh, they give it a little bit higher rating than I did. But but other than that, you know, I just wanted to get a consensus and but yeah, this is something I would definitely say uh, try five of them, see where you go, and if it's something that you like, then. You know where you can be. Either you could be a box split or you could be a fiver. But for me, it was a, definitely a fiver. Mm-hmm. Like I said, yeah. I just think the Maduro's a l- little more uh, yeah. for me. You know? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I had the Davidor C- 702 Series R. Mm. Mm. I like it when you start a sentence with Davidoff. Mm. <laughs> Davidoff. Because <laughs> you talk about flavor. When you talk about Davidoff, you're talking about cigars that are going to be flavor. Yeah, what can I there? say? I mean, you have yeah, Davidoff I mean, Classic A, uh, a little bit edgier. Like uh-huh. Dav- like like I've had some of the uh, 702 series, uh, uh, 702 series, like the uh-huh. Special T, the Double R, um, yeah. You know, the 702 series, when I first, first started Stogie Geeks, so back in 2017, and I, I had this one, and it just seemed like a little bit edgier. Not, yeah. it, it was a flavor of, for days, for sure. You're going to get earthiness. You're going to get that Davidoff hay. You're going to get a lot more spice than um, some of the, the other offerings within that series there. But yeah. uh, super cool. Um, your wrapper is uh, e- Ecuadorian. Your binder is from the Dominican Republic along with your filler. It is a uh, four by uh, seven eighths and f- by 50 ring gauge. Uh, yeah. It's a Robusto size. A little pricey, right? Uh, mm-hmm. They are, you know, they are $21 Robustos. Let's just get that all out in the open uh, there. But, you know, they're in regular production. Um, if you have a chance to smoke one cigar, I know I always give a classic example of, you know, your weekend schedule fire pit and you want a good, ridgy, edgy cigar to go along with your cocktail, but you don't want to spend two hours if the, if you're the only one by the fire pit and everyone else is swimming in the pool, you know, everybody has a visual, right? It's a good way to have a good cigar, uh, there, uh, super cool, dark wrapper, uh, Constructed well. What can I say? Um, I I always buy these in like the fi- they come in like a pla- uh, um, a cardboard box slide sleeve thing in five packs. Always yeah. buy the five packs. I mean, you know, uh, you don't have to outlay. You know, you buy a five pack, it's like ninety nine bucks. You you, mm-hmm. you buy a box, it's five hundred bucks, right? So you know, that's that's, that's 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 you know, put in perspective, right? Yeah. Um, I would make them box worthy, but I don't want to tell the story geeks listen to go out and spend five hundred sixty two dollars right on a box. Sure. So get the five pack. That doesn't make it a fiver. I just think it's just a it, yeah. it's a you know it's a great way to treat yourself. You know, summertime. You for example, you're gonna go see fireworks if we have them, whatever, or go to a fire pit or chill out and there. Yeah, it's a robusto. It's gonna last you fifty five minutes. You've had a great cigar. Taste wise, it's gonna linger on your palate. That's what I like, right? Yeah. If I only have one cigar a day, and you know the baby was taking a nap, and I had the cigar, and I let it linger on my palate, and then I'll have a couple drinks later or whatever. At least it's like, 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 yeah, you know, you know, I had my cigar today. There you go. If it's at those types of days or a special occasion, they're super cool yeah. sticks. Super school sti- sticks. They're just, they're just. Yeah. Excuse me. They're just spicy and edgier than. Yeah. Davidoff is starting to, in my opinion, starting to move in that direction, or they have been. I'm just catching up with them either way, right? Yeah. Uh, for the fanboys or gals out there, right? I just, you know, it's it's a good stick, and and I'd make them box worthy. But you know, go out there. Most places that are Davidoff exclusives, you know, that there's a, a, a yeah. certain shops that only carry Davidoff. They have the five packs. You can get them in. Great summer action. Get it yourself a five pack and treat yourself. There you yeah. go. 
Yeah, five packs a way to go on those Davidoffs. I haven't. I haven't. I probably. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say I've had probably two Davidoffs mm-hmm. cigars in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Only because there's just so many things out there. I already know what I'm gonna get with a Davidoff cigar. I, I'm going for. I'm gonna get flavor. I'm gonna get some complexity, and I'm gonna get. But that's you know that's not a real strong cigar. It's not a light cigar. It's not medium. It's just a lot of flavors there, and so it's a lot of it's a lot of work, you know, for me in my mind. So, but but yet I do talk to a lot of people, speak with a lot of people that smoke Davidoff on a regular uh, basis, and a lot of them go for the five pack. Uh, shorter, you know, the four by 50 or the four by yeah. what have you. And they get those and they say, you know, that's, that's a good way. And if they, if it's something they really like and it's only available on a limited basis, then they'll go ahead and inject and go ahead and break out that AMX card and, and get that, get that uh, box, you know, but for most part, they, they, they go with the five, they go with that five pack. And multiple five packs. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a smart move by Davidoff. M- movement yeah. five packs. There you go. And you know, you, you, yeah. if the shop has them, and then a Davidoff vendor, they'll have them. You don't need to outlay all that cash. Yeah, you know? exactly. It depends on whatever your numbers are. You know. Exactly. But this is not yeah. an economic show. Can I tell you about an awesome stick I liked, which I was pleasantly surprised about? Mm. Hoya, de Nama- Hoya de Nicaragua, Antonio da Carojo. Ooh. Yeah, uh, rapper Nicaragua. is Nicaraguan uh, Corojo uh, Oscuro binder and filler yeah. in Nicaraguan. Um, it's just spicy and robust. Tons of ratings uh, above ninety. Most was ninety one, yeah. but ninety ninety one uh, there too. It's available in four different sizes. I had two of the four. Um, yeah. I had the five and a half by fifty four. In the five by forty four, five by forty four is freaking tasty. Mm. Yep, it's just dark yeah. and spicy and balanced, and y- y- you know it- it's it's kind of like a power cigar, right? It's dark, it's oily. Yeah. Um, you know, it 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 is full body that you'd expect from Hoya de Nicaragua for sure. Yeah. Um, kind of reminded me of like a really like a really aged. Um, Jaime Garcia, just spicy. If you could kind of get that visual in your head, like the spiciness of the, of the Jaime Garcia. And then the oily wrapper, like you could feel it like in your hands. Like it's, it's super oily. Have your lighter handy. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you golf with it, you will light it a a lot. Um, a little bit more than normal, um, there, but you know, I, uh, just chalk that up to the oily wrapper, but, uh, definitely I, if you have a friend who who is in the in that profile with you, I'd box split it with a friend. Yeah, you know, I I don't think I'd really kind of go through a full box, but I'd box split it with a friend. If you have a friend uh, who's who who's in the same profile. Yeah, that that that, that Corojo wrapper, that, like you said, when it's oily like that, it does it does tend to be on the more uh, spicier side, and I'm not talking about like a hot spice. More on the on the on the, I mean, for me, I think more on the mediocre when mm-hmm. I'm talking about a score of rappers. It's just on the medium side of those things. It's not overpowering. It's not under. It's just right there, in the middle, and it just really finds. It's enjoying that stick as you go through it. You know the, you know the first, second, thirds uh, of that stick, and then it just kind of rekindles back at, towards the end. Um, in my in my opinion, and in my um, experience with cigars that are wrapped in this uh you know uh wrapper so mm. but, but yeah no I'll, I'll have to give that one a try I, yeah probably ha- i probably have it i just haven't i haven't <laughs> i've got a bat i've got I, I need someone to take to do an inventory of my cigars i'm getting to that point now where uh you know even for father's day i've asked for a larger humidor oh my god really <laughs> You know, the, I do the plastic bag. <laughs> oh my god, dude! It's just like, well, I want to make sure I take care of them, and and I and 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 since I'm, more, you know, you know, we we do the 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 ratings and things of that nature. I want to be fair, but yeah, you you know, but in my truck, I got my my acrylic cylinder mm. with a couple of you know, and it's sealed, and it's got about 
15 to 20 cigars in there at any given time and it's got the it's got the uh boveda humidity packs in there to keep them you know but yeah uh yeah it's just i've got some new i've got some stuff in that i've got to go through but it's just it's so much work <laughs> and i'm not bragging i'm just saying it i don't is have the bandwidth well i mean we we have a uh it's a case it's what six feet by four yeah. feet and i just stick them in there and then when i need them so like i do keep them in the humidor you know what i mean like yeah. you could just stack them in paul's humidor i have just jammed all you know <laughs> And Paul has all well, the boxes all lined up. And then I need to do you can tell I'm in it just because they're all in like the bags with the bags open, so it gets the thing. And I just I just throw them in there, and it, you know he has he has complained about a, a lot about I, that. So we're good. I, I, the other day I was thinking I go I wish there was the penny saver was still out. I remember the penny saver when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you can go through it and you can put a little one in there for like Cabinet. two dollars. You know, Man. but yeah, I was, I was, no, what I'm saying is going to put a help wanted, you know, I need someone to inventory my cigars with me and they're not with me all the time, but they can learn it. And then, and then uh, I'll pay them in cigars, you know, pay that's way too much time, bro. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's just a lot of time. And I just, you know, like you said, bandwidth is an issue. Inventory. Uh, I don't know. That's I cool. <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> it, these are. I'm not complaining I, either. These are good prob. These are good problems to have. Yeah, I'm but gonna, I'm willing yeah. to share. With anybody here in the DFW area, you know, email me Drew at StoneGeeks.com. We'll get together. You know, you know, it's not gonna be a big interview process. No 10.99, just a good old text and handshake, and you know. And you're gonna interview? Uh, um, no, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not even. Gonna... I'm not even. I'm not even gonna go there. Like going over your house and 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 and, and invent. Why do you want? Why do you want to keep? Like you mean like say like count wise inventory? Like a... no, 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 no. Just like you know, I gotta label everything. Put you know, have a book, have an up to date book. You know, because not everything has a barcode on it. Because I was able to scan. If they have a barcode on it, I was able to scan it. It would automatically you know put it in my computer system, but. <sighs> It, a lot of the stuff don't come with bar barcodes, you know, right now. So I'm not sure what that's about, but but I'm Shit. talking about stuff stuff that I've been, you know, we've been searching or I've been looking at and just trying to get it in and trying to figure out where I want to put it, what, you know, when I should smoke it. Because if it's already been aging for five years, it's time to smoke that MF or it's time to get it going before it becomes a dog rocket. No, nah, Paul. Paul's got some stuff, but dude, he's like the classic freaking. He'll come, he'll come to work with like a Ziploc bag, right? With tons yeah. of like Opus X's. I mean, like twenty of them, right? Thirty of them. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. been age. I found these. He's been aging since two thousand freaking twelve. And I'm like, all right, like you know, yeah, <laughs> have some. I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm like, dude, yeah, you know, all right, you know, what do you think? Well, they're aged. They're freaking awesome. It's Opus X. What I'm gonna say, like, yeah, you know what I mean, exactly. like, you know, you know, but these are freaking phenomenal. Yeah, I know. But if I bought them. In 2012, they wouldn't have made. If I bought them in January, <laughs> they would have been gone by February 2012. Yeah, exactly. You know what I gone. mean? Like you know, but I mean, that's just you know, that's cool. All yeah. I gotta say is that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have well, another just, stick? You know, Do you have one more stick? Yeah, I got one more stick. I have one more as well. About, yeah, we could talk about. Uh, let's see. What do you want to talk about? Let's talk about Roman craft and temperance. Ooh. Uh, we. I, my other cigar was gonna be the uh, Dunburton Tobacco and Trust Nakatamali. Uh, you know, um, we talked to Steve last week, but man, at Nakatomali, you and I both can agree that that's a pretty awesome cigar. It's a $16 cigar, but it's well worth the price. But let's get into Roma Craft Intemperance. Uh, the Breach of Peace, the Grand Robusto, it's a $8 stick. A wrapper is a Brazilian. Are you ready for this? Oh boy. Brazilian Era Pica. Is that right? Ah, Is that what you're episode? asking me? I'd have to go back to last week's episode. <laughs> Arapica, yeah, that's what that's what Steve Arapica. said. So Arapica, yeah, I'm gonna follow what Steve said last week. Oh, that was good. Arapica, uh, binder Indonesian filler Nicaraguan with the Dominican Republic, uh, and then uh, it's out of the uh, Fabrica de Tobacco Nicasureno uh, in Esteli, Nicaragua. And and this is a great stick, another great stick by 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 uh, Skip Martin out there at Roma Craft and his people out there. I mean, you guys, you know, I if if you don't know it, and I probably say it all the time, like you always go to that Tatawahi tenderloin. I always go to the Roma Craft 
uh, Neanderthal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as far as one of those sticks. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this stick here, Rich, you can expect the taste notes of rich chocolate, uh, dark coffee, uh, spice, uh, smoky almonds, and toast, leather, and peppery oak. And I'm just telling you, man, from the get, from the onset of this stick, by just looking at it, touching it, just, you know, sniff it, do whatever you want to do to it. <laughs> I, I just get past all that shit and I just start, I just fire that stick up and go. Um, because that's the kind of stick that Skip, Skip puts out there. I mean, it's just, you know, it's as, as you get into the first thirds, I mean, this thing just really uh, ignites with that peppery uh, uh, nuance, uh, the leather. Uh, they come together, and then the smokiness. At first, I couldn't get where that smoky was coming from, but then I associated it to a smoky almond because there was a little smoothness on the retro hell. It wasn't as sting- stingy, or as, it didn't really give you that, ooh, you know, uh, when you're retro, as you do with the Neanderthal. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, this 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 stick is 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 definitely uh, a stick that I, I recommend for y'all to try. Uh, you. Uh, I would say uh, eat something light, not nothing heavy. Just eat something light, uh, just because uh, the nicotine content is there, or what they call that now, the vitamin N. I shouldn't say nicotine on the air. I should say vitamin N. That's what I've been told mm-hmm. by somebody. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I, I gave this a uh, a box split uh, only because you know I have quite a few things from skip martin and so i just i uh it's definitely a box worthy cigar but i box play it with my friends when we buy uh uh roma craft we we buy like five or six boxes at a time and split them up uh but you can't go wrong with this stick uh it's uh the breach of peace uh roma craft intemperance uh grand robusto at 750 in some states up to eight bucks in others depending on tax and what have you. But, uh, yeah, very good stick. Um, you're going to enjoy it if you if you like more of the medium to full. Uh, you will enjoy this stick. Um, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. I fell into this cigar. Um, it was on the shelf, and it kind of reminded me of it's the same cigar shop that has 685 Woodlawns available, right, by Christoph. Mm. And yes. there's not too many that have it. I'm like, man, your freaking custom is not right. You, they don't even. You asked me about that cigar. They don't even while. know. But but I'm not talking about that cigar because the same cigar that I'm about to talk about is the same thing. And I'm like, huh, mm. uh, Havana, HVC, Havana City Cigar. I've been kind of getting into this stuff, right? You know, kind of getting into this stuff over last calendar year and having that. And and, um, uh, sometime in, I think it was the beginning of December last year, I came across the Black Friday by that. And these were readily available on the shelf. And I'm like, huh. I'm like, all right. And this year's size was different. It's a four and a half by 52. It's a Petit Robusto. Uh, I'm talking about the HVC Black Friday 2019 edition. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a Nicaraguan Puro with a Habano Cafe wrapper over a binder and, uh, from Esteli. So it's obviously Nicaraguan. And uh, Criollo and Cri- Criollo 98 fillers for your yeah. binder and filler. And I smoked it and I'm like, whoa. The, what is this, right? This because I've had some of the other stuff from 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 Havana uh, City cigars, HVC cigars. I'm like, yeah, this anniversary is pretty good. And, you know, it's cool. You know, and I had these. And I'm like, yo, I need a box of these. And the owner goes, <laughs> right. And then I left. And then like a half hour later, the phone rings. He goes, you want a box? So I was like, yeah. He goes, all right, I got a box. Blah blah. blah. I didn't know they were a box of fifty, right? <laughs> so <laughs> gets better. Story gets better, right? Yeah. So I get these sticks and I'm like, oh my god, all right, whatever. I'm like, all right, yeah, sure. Some people were what I thought it was, but that's cool. And I get the cigars. I'm like, these are freaking awesome. And I'm like, do you have another box? He's like, Jojo, you're killing me. I said, no, come on. Do you have another box? He's like, I want another box. He's like, yeah, all right. So I got a second box. Little did I know that there's only 400 boxes of these freaking things made. Oh. Right. 
So get, yeah. so this little shop is getting these, these sticks. So, uh, and then I turned on another kid, Matt, um, and Matt bought two boxes as well. So between him and me, there's four boxes. So yeah. that me saying there's 398, I'm sorry, 396 boxes that were available for this stick. And so I yeah. brought the box into Stogie Geeks, right? And at the same time, we started releasing the Security Weekly news segment. And Dr. Doug White would come in, and he'd grab it because the Petit Robusto was the perfect size to do a quick 25-minute segment of a show. Yeah. All of a sudden, I get looking about boxes, like, like deep, like it's, like, used, right? Paul started liking them. I started smoking them. Uh, ironically, I V-cutted, deep V-cutted these. I don't know why. I never bulleted them. I don't know why. Petit Robusto, it's a little big on, on the ring gate. Well, 52, but whatever, sure. right? Phenomenal smoke. Here's the point. When I had six left, Drew, I smoked one, <laughs> and I have th- two for you, mm. okay? And in my mind, I'm like, I got to send the Drew, got to send the Drew, got to send the Drew. Now, I sent you your sticks. By the way, Gustavo, it's happened last month. I forgot to update you. Drew got his stick. So that means you're next on the list. So I'm, I'm cleaning. I wasn't going to tell. I'm All right, I know, right? Thank you, right? You gave me a month head start, right? So Gustavo, yeah. you're next, buddy, right? So yeah. I, I will give that because I'm going to do, and, and I'm like, okay, we can't touch these for Drew. These are for Drew because I don't think I can get them anymore. So anyway, right. doing a little bit of research, um, that c- cigars are phenomenal. I... This has been in my Story Geeks notes forever to talk about this stick. And, and again, we just never had a chance to catch up and, and, and have a conversation or an episode yeah. like this in a while. So I don't like sending Story Geeks listeners on a wild goose chase. However, I did find <laughs> the uh, 2018 version, which was only 150 boxes and 50 box counts. So 7,500 cigars total oh, uh, that came out there. And uh, I'm looking for some more. And, and I'm sure there's shops that just have them. Or they just blow out. I mean, whichever. So I don't like sending Story Geeks listens on a wild goose chase. However, if your shop has HVC cigars, tell them you want a Black Friday when it comes out. Because I'm sure they're going to release it because they've released it for the past five years. So if we're betting horses, I'm going to go. For, they're gonna, whoops. If we're betting horses, I know they're going to go for horse number six, right? They're going to go for it, right? So uh, get on the list and figure that out with your local retailers and cross that bridge. But, dude, let me tell you something. When you get this stick, you just freaking just just smoke it right away and enjoy it because they're gone. So you said that it was a uh, – what's the wrapper binder filler Uh, in it? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get back on there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, It's Nicaraguan. Yeah, it's all Nicaraguan. It's awesome. Oh, no. Nicaraguan. No. So okay. <laughs> no, you have a um, a binder from Esteli and a, a, a Criollo 98 fillers. Um, and your uh, Nicaraguan Imperial uses a Habano Cafe wrapper. Ah, Dude, it's, okay. it's, it's bang. Like, completely, like, off the charts. Like, I mean, I, I would have to say, because of its exclusivity, it's a fight Chuck Norris. It's a fight Chuck Norris. And I have some. Oh, it's a fight Chuck Norris. Okay. Yeah. I thought you said it was a fight. You cut out for a second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A fiver? You think I hype it all up for a fiver? I was going to say, no, no, no. I was going to say, I was trying to listen to what you were saying. Okay. You fight. Oh, yeah. You definitely got to fight Chuck Norris for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I can't can't wait. And it's just one of those sticks. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, it's crazy. And they were readily, they were, they came out, like, you know, obviously, they came out, like, Real, yeah. they came out and they finally the shop finally got them. It was around Christmas time, you know what I mean? And I grabbed it, and yeah. honestly, I grabbed this guy, yeah, it's Petit Robusto. I like some HVC, like JoJo, it's exclusive, like it's different. Yeah, they're all exclusive, right? Everything's freaking exclusive, right? You know, but I'm like, yeah, all right. And I try it, and I'm like, stop the press, this stick doesn't suck, you know what I mean? And then, yeah. uh, and then there you go. So, yeah, that's the story. And and nice. then and then I didn't realize like how exclusive they were. Here's the kicker. They're seven dollars and forty cents. Wow. <laughs> plus seven forty a stick. Pl- oh, pl- plus your regular taxes, so maybe eight ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight bucks, yeah. eight and a quarter, mm-hmm. what have you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but still, I mean for under ten bucks and yep. so, being on a limited limited uh limited run. Yeah. Small limited, batch for yeah. sure. Yeah. Super small batch, super cool, spicy bomb. Oh, yeah. Awesome stick. So um, I do have some for you, Drew. 
um, Sweet. and and they were and the funny thing is when I packed your first thing, I was so because uh-huh. I really packed it in as you notice like with the box like I yeah. got every and then when I sealed it up, I was yeah. like, oh, I forgot those like you know what I mean? I was too conscious because <laughs> I was because when I finally got to the point. Right of okay, yeah. today's Drew's day. He's going in the mail today, and I started picking out cigars. I was like, oh, 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 I can't fit this. I can't fit that. And I was just going through what I liked from what I've been saving. So, oh yeah, yeah. there's a method to my madness. I wish I was more organized, but I'm not. I apologize. I got to remember not to send you those big ring gauges anymore. <laughs> no, like I said, I, I actually have them, and 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 I, honestly, with me, yeah. it's a mood thing. It's a mood. It is. It I got to be in the what? mood. I'm the same way. It's a I'm super, the same way. Yeah. It's a, I got to yeah. be in the mood for a big ring gauge because I know I'm going to be there for a couple hours. And sometimes, you know, it, it's it's crazy. Like, just you have yeah. crazy days. It's it's business owner. Phone's ringing. I, I mean, I'm sitting here. Emails are piling up. You know how it goes. It's just that's the way it yeah. goes. It's the way it plus goes, you have a little, Plus, you have a little guy there that keeps you busy after hours. Mm. See, for me, I get to send my little grand guy back to his parents <laughs> and back outside I go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He's it, it's, it's amazing. He's going to be two in September and, and I, yeah, my grandson will I, be two in August. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. I just can't, I, I, it's awesome. I can't, it's super cool. I mean, you know, you gotta, but it's work. I mean, you know, it's work, yeah. you know, and you gotta like being called dad, like every four seconds. Yeah. Dad, dad, <laughs> Bro, I hear you. You know what I mean? I hear you. Yeah. You know, what do you want? Yogurt? No, you can only have two a day. Like that's the, you know, we we gotta. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know, and he's been going on stages where he's losing his mind now. So where he sees something, so he'll be like, I want this, I want that, I want that, I want. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just you know, but it's exploratory, and that's super cool. It's it's just amazing. There you go. You know. It won't last long, man. Before you know it, they're. Well, how I know, look at it is by the time I by the time he gets older and doesn't want to be with his dad, I'll be a senior citizen, so it'll work out great. <laughs> you know. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> so, any Drew, uh, any last comments you want to wrap up this segment? What are you thinking? Oh uh, no, it was a pretty good segment. Uh, yeah, this is this was fun. I mean, we we haven't been able to do this for a while just because we've been busy with you know uh, you know with our content interviews with the uh, with with people and uh, so yeah, it's been great. Uh, other than that, I mean, uh, no, not really. I mean, there's not really much else. Uh, I'm bad about thinking real quick and then I go wait 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 wait. I forgot something. I need a Slack channel with you. <laughs> you have but, one. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> You're already no, but, on uh, it. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, other than that, I you know, no, I not really, That's not cool. really much more. You know, we're we're good. Yeah. You don't want to talk about your mouthwash? I do. Trying to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like, Drew. Like, Drew sent right. me his notes of his sticks today, Story Geeks, and I was like, what the hell is this mouthwash thing? So and did oh, you I get my know. email? So let me ask you this question. Since we're since we're let's take a few minutes to talk about this. So uh, have you heard about this rock? Rocky Patel smoking championships. That w- I sent you an email on it. I yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I heard about it. Yeah. Have you, okay. I I just didn't know if. Yeah. I I because I, I mentioned it a couple weeks ago about how I was smoking a cigar, a stogie that we were rating. Mm-hmm. I was doing it to their to their specifics. I wouldn't put it down. I didn't ash it. I let it let it you know smoke it. Mm. And you're supposed to you're supposed to smoke it like. You're supposed to intentionally smoke the cigar in two hours, mm-hmm. and if you beat the two hours, then you were you were smoking too fast. You weren't going to win. So, anyways, mm. uh, but yeah, I just wanted to. So, by uh, the mouthwash that I was talking about was called is called Smart Mouth, and I wanted to know if anybody out there has tried it. I know, I think I saw that Alan Rubin, Alec and Bradley. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, you know, he was talking about this uh, sometime last year. And then my um, so, anyways, I found it on Amazon. I bought I bought the two packers like twenty eight bucks. Mm-hmm. But uh, but then I also saw somebody else recently did, uh, bought it as well, and I'm not sure if you know. But anyways, uh, let me get out of the squirrel mode here. Uh, Smart mouthwash. It's an oral care solution. It is packed with innovative science to stop bad breath at its source and prevent it from coming back. It's patented zinc 
eye on technology. So, anyways, I bought this stuff, and I was just because they were saying for smokers, for cigar smokers, that this is the thing to have mm -hmm. uh, in the repertoire. So after you smoke a cigar, you got a meeting to go to, or you got to take the wife out, or go on a date, or just go, you know, around about your business, about the rest of the day, about your business. You just take a little bit of this stuff, you swish it around for 30 seconds, out it goes, and then uh, <laughs> don't rinse your mouth. But yeah, man, this stuff is, I'm going to tell you right now, I go, I, I was very, I was leery about it, but you know, because at 30, at 28 bucks for, you know, 32 ounces of this stuff, this stuff better work. And actually, <laughs> this stuff works, works pretty damn good. Uh, there you go. The taste, the, the, I did the test with some people in my office. Uh, what did you do? You girls. just went up to your wife and said, want to make out? Like, how'd that work? No, no, no. I, no, 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 like, <laughs> no, I, I did this. I, this. I asked some girls at the office. And, uh, <laughs> Drew, Drew, you're, you're freaking setting yourself up for this stuff, Yo. man. Don't send me this. You send me this stuff. I, I, I'm going to pounce all over it, dude. <laughs> Johnny's dying in the background. He's, he's freaking yeah, dying. No, I, he's I, dying. I, I, was, I, was talking to, I was talking to some of my coworkers in the office. Did you ladies. ask them if they wanted to make out? Like, what? Well, <laughs> no, just talking. And one of somebody said, "Wow, somebody's got some really fresh breath here." <laughs> Holy <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> nice, nice. I was like, "Yeah, that's me." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I own that." You know, for once, it wasn't the uh, God farted. Who farted? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so they this, smell yeah. your breath through your mask. It's so powerful. Oh yeah. no no my okay in my office we're not wearing masks. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're gotcha. all good. We all take the temperature. Oh yeah we, all, yeah, yeah. we all give each other that look, and we know you know that's how tight my office is. Yeah. We all know what we got. Like, <laughs> like I was talking to my mother yesterday, right? And then she was like, "Oh yeah, you know, we're at the church." Blah, blah, blah. She goes, "It's weird, right?" Like, you know, like, they don't want you singing because people, like, with the, sp the thing. And I'm like, all right. And then I says, she goes, I go. So I had her in stitches, right? I says, Mom, I says, did someone cough? She's like, Joey, it's so funny. Someone calls. Like, everyone's, like, profiling. <laughs> like, wondering. Like, I was like, dude, this is the world we live in. Like, this is the conversations yeah. we're having. And, of course, you know me. I got to throw another log on the fire. I'm like, well, did you cough? Yeah. Did you cough? She's like, no, I didn't cough. She goes, well, one time I had a tickle in my throat and I was trying to not cough. So I'm like, oh, like this. I'm like, mom, that must have been torture. She's like, I know, right? And I'm like, oh, dude, it was the most funniest freaking thing. Oh. Like, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> she goes, oh, it's you're like, it's everywhere. <laughs> you're like COVID <laughs> profiling people. Somebody dude. calls like, at the grocery store. Yeah, oh, yeah. And they get, man, they get leers. I mean, I, and I watch them like, and I tell my wife, see, that's why we wear our mask. Especially yeah. when they're not wearing a mask and they're coughing or they sneeze. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it. it go, I mean, man, the looks. Everybody just like, boom, you know. So if you like, want to be the makeout king of Texas, oh, Drew, yeah. ha, email no. Drew at StoryGeeks.com. He will. He has a coupon. You have a coupon. You probably have a coupon, right? No, no? I have a coupon. Right, okay. gonna, you're gonna no, call, no, you're gonna, what, I, what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have well, Johnny edit well, this. Well, I'm gonna have Johnny it. rip this up, and we're we're gonna send it to the company. Like I just Wait. think it's freaking phenomenal. I, I, yeah, <laughs> for our listeners who have a significant other that, uh, you know, that say, "Man, you smell like a cigar. Your breath, you know, don't kiss me right now." You know, this try this out. I mean, I I really want to get you know some people to you know to, to try this and mm -hmm. uh, and get your take on it. But yeah, it, it is. Uh, <laughs> It is definitely a, a great product. I I I, I feel and uh, yeah, it's uh, can't go wrong with it. Don't kiss me right now. I right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a guy. Hey, I got a I got a question here. I got it. We got it. We got to answer this question. All right, and then we're gonna wrap Ready? up. Okay, Levi yep. guy guys sent this to us here. Do you guys answer questions or what? Wanted to know why I have so much trouble with my butane lighters. I bleed the old butane out. And make sure it it's clean, mm -hmm. but still neither want neither won't light or it goes out. Mm -hmm. Okay. After two seconds, mm -hmm. after a second or two, mm -hmm. anyways, that's what he's saying. Cool. Just need. What's I his name? The, Eugene. Levi. Levi. Yeah. I can answer that question for you twofold. Number one, the more expensive the lighter, it's still gonna suck. Okay, so don't go out and spend tons of money on a lighter. Number two, yeah. when you do the butane, right, uh, I know it sounds kind of crazy, blow into the flame plot without igniting it, like a, 
like that. Or if you really want to get rowdy, do some canned air. It's probably a little bit of sediment that's setting in there. Because as you light your cigar, a little bit of ashes fall and there you go. Or you can do what I do. You buy a freaking lighter and if it doesn't work, you throw it out and ask a friend for a smoke and meet a new friend. I mean, ask a friend for a light and meet a new friend. That's seriously, I have not. I, I, I actually had an episode on this years ago, mm -hmm. Drew, pre you and, and all the emails I was getting. Actually, I think I met Gustavo then. Uh, he was emailing <laughs> me, like, which lighter. Because I was like, I can't freaking get a lighter that freaking works. Like, it's a. It, and, and, and it's been that way. And when I owned the cigar shop back in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, yeah. Here we we would just we always get complaints like that like always yeah. always always I, I I can my only advice I can give you is um in in here in the center just give it a little <laughs> before you you know refill it in there that might do the trick but it's it's been a, a constant freaking barrage and a chase uh for for me as well in my whole experience so yeah uh, and I do use uh, I. I don't know about you, but I'm very I'm very conscientious about which butane I use. Um, I try to use the ones that are really filtered. Um, so I, uh, Lotus is the brand that I use. That the one in the big tube, Johnny? Yeah, is that the one we have back there? Look, look above my desk. I think it's Lotus, right? The right on that uh, yeah, uh, shelf where my uh, blue uh, yeah green cup is. It's Lotus, right? It's probably Lotus. It's probably Lotus. Yeah, it's loaded. Oh, yeah. I got Lotus here. Yeah, so it's a it's a premium. Beer. Yeah, it's Lotus. Yep. Yeah, so this stuff is made in England. It's got zero impurities. It's a premium brand, you know, butane. It's really, I mean, I, I that that's the exact I, same I, one I, we use. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great it's a great product. I I, I tell this pretty much to all my friends because they always ask me some of the same questions. I will let them know that Joe said to give their lighter a blowjob, uh, yep. to clear it out <laughs> uh, before uh filling it up or what have you so his name is levi <laughs> yeah his name is levi Levi, uh, great question thanks for watching story geeks and listening to story geeks we really appreciate it for sure use the lotus lighter i mean use the lotus blue butane it's yes. from england the mouthwash will you'll be the makeout king of, of your town yes. uh there if you're married <laughs> i suggest you just be the makeout king there uh yep. we we don't need any attorney uh and um you know if you want to be the makeout king of Texas, try Drew's mouthwash. If you forget what it was, email him at Drew at storygeeks.com. It's, it's not my it's not my mouthwash. It's <laughs> it's smart mouth mouthwash. Smart it mouth. It belongs to them. I don't own it. They belong. <laughs> Dude, I will uh, put this on my list of things to do. We're gonna send them uh, the video. Yeah. Yeah, we'll send them out. Yeah, because uh... we'll post it on Facebook, and there you go. Speaking of which, yeah. remember we keep the conversation going all week long. Storygeeks.com. Maybe. Uh, Slack or Discord if you're interested Joe H at StoryGeeks.com We can start to compile that list Facebook.com for us at StoryGeeks Email all your complaints to Drew at StoryGeeks.com I've uh, been your host Joe Hosepper It's been a privilege and an honor to be here Drew, make sure you switch the mouthwash And get back to work Oh yeah, yeah, yeah There Always. you go, absolutely <laughs> uh, Story Geeks, I want to remind you that behind every Cigar, there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and support your local brick and mortars. Special thanks to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, Placentia Cigars, and McAuliffe Cigars. Stow your geeks, stay safe, use your mask, don't use your head. Make sure you give each other a hug. Keep social distance. Love, peace. See you next time. <laughs>